Number 32. Apply the loop rule to the loop A, E, D, C, B, A in the following figure. All right. So uh, what I would first do is I would first just understand, you know, where the loop is. So you got to follow it in terms of, let me change the color here. You got to follow it in terms of the, you know, the way you read it from left to right. So let's go from A to E to D to C to B and then back to A. So in other words, you're looking at this loop here and you're going to be analyzing it in a counterclockwise fashion. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, why don't I leave that up? I'm actually, yeah, why don't I do that? Let's just do it this way. So I'm going to leave some arrows here. So we're going to analyze it in this, with this direction associated. And then we're going to come back to A, okay? Um, A, okay. So loop rule, what is it? Well, loop rule simply says that the sum of all of the potential rises in a circuit minus the sum of can't do that. The sum of all the potential falls will equal zero. That's what loop rule says. Okay. So what we have to do is when we analyze the circuit that I, you know, outlined here, uh, we have to take into account, well, do we have what's happening to the potential along certain key points? Is it rising? Is it falling? What the heck's going on? Right? So what I like to do is I'm just going to make a little table over here, a little, you know, table that involves the rises and the falls. All right. And we're just going to look at this conceptually. So you got to start at A because that's what it tells us to do. And what we're going to do is then we're going to move in a counterclockwise fashion. And we realize that we get to our first key point. All right. You're basically going to be looking for or analyzing the resistors and the batteries. That's it. The two things. So once you get to a resistor, you have to say, oh, stop. Something's going to happen to the potential. Either the potential is going to rise or the potential is going to fall. Okay. Now, here's what you need to remember. That when, whenever... The direction in which you're analyzing the circuit, in this case we're going from left to right, is in opposition to, to the direction of the stated current, I1 here, that indicates a potential rise. Okay, That's a potential rise. So if you're analyzing it from left to right and the current's flowing from right to left across a resistor, that is a that will represent a potential rise. Now, anytime, you know, current flows through a resistor, potential will be changing because we know that the potential is going to equal the current multiplied by the resistance. Okay. So what we now can do is to find the potential rise in this case, all we simply need to know is going to be the current. Well, they didn't give us a number, but they told us, you know, a variable, it's I1 and the resistance. Now you can label this R1 or you can plug in six, right? Because they're one and the same. I mean, they gave us the value. So in other words, the potential rise here will be six, six I1, right? Six times the current. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that then and plug it into the rises category. Now, since these, since the column, you know, the table here is going to represent the potential rise and the potential falls, I'm not going to write V is equal to six I1. Uh, you know, I1, I'm just going to write 6I1 because 6 times the current will represent the potential. All right. So that's all that there is to that. Now you keep going, right? We're going to keep going around and we realize, okay, we get to point E, nothing of interest happens there. Now we're going to make a turn and we're going to head on upwards and nothing happens there. And then we're going to keep on going and we realize that we're going to now approach another resistor. So take into account, they don't tell you like the, the, the direction of that current, you know, right, uh, right here, but you got a current here, I2, and then you have another I2 here. So we can kind of reason out that it's, you know, flowing in a clockwise direction. So if you notice you're analyzing it now in opposition, again, you're moving counterclockwise basically around, or you're moving from right to left, but yet the current's moving from left to right. So this will represent another potential rise. So what you're going to do is you're going to take then the resistance value of 0 0.5 and multiply it by whatever current's flowing through it. And that was I2. Okay, easy enough. Then you're going to now approach the next point of interest, right? And you get to a battery. Up, oh, you got to stop. Once you get to the battery, I don't care about the current. All you're going to be looking at now is what's happening. Are you moving from a big bar to a little bar? 
or would you be moving from a little bar to a big bar? And the way that we're analyzing it, since we're moving in a counterclockwise fashion, you're moving from a big bar to a little bar. Big to little represents a fall, right? You're falling. It's going from big to little. If you were looking and analyzing the circuit in the opposite direction, meaning if it was going from A to B to C to D to E and then back to A, then this would have represented a potential rise because you're going from little to big. Little to big, you're rising. Big to little, you're falling. So whatever the potential that's represented by this battery is, uh, will be the value that we're going to plug in. So this represents, remember, a fall. So I'm going to plug in 18 volts. I'm going to leave out the V because those are the units. I'm just plugging in the magnitude. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's what we would do. So now you're going to continue, move on out, right? And you're going to come back and you're going to realize, up oh, before you get to A, right? Before you get to A, you have to pass through another resistor. And, oh, again, right? We're moving in the opposite direction. You're analyzing it in a counterclockwise fashion, but yet the current here is moving in a clockwise fashion. That's going to represent a potential rise, all right? Whenever they're consistent, if you're we're analyzing the circuit in a clockwise fashion and the current was moving in a clockwise fashion, that would represent a potential fall, just FYI. So in this case, the current's going, uh, the potential is then going to rise again. So you're going to take the resistance value, R2, but instead they gave us a number. So I'm going to plug in the 2.5 and multiply it by the stated current. And they didn't tell me a number. They just gave me a variable. So that's I2. And then finally, after we pass through that resistance, we come back to A and we're back home. We're all back home. And that means we're done. All right. Now, all we got to do is simply just plug this on into the formula. So let me just erase this stuff. And I'll move this down a little bit. And all we're going to do now is take, as it says, the sum of all of the potential rises. So sum all of the rises, okay? So you're going to take 6i1 plus then 0.5i2 plus then 2.5i2. And then you're going to subtract from that the sum of all of the potential falls. There's only one, so that's an 18. And that's then going to equal zero. And this is loop rule now applied to the circuit. A, E, D, C, B, A. Now, whether you want to distribute this negative sign and make the 18 negative or leave it minus a positive 18, that's math now. That's not, the physics is over, right? However you want to write this now, you know, in terms of signs or whatnot, uh, is totally up to you, right? But this is loop rule, and that is the answer. So I do hope this helped, and uh, if it did, if I could, please beg you, uh, I'm not gonna, you know. Hold on one second. Let me get. Okay, I'm I'm literally on my hands and knees. Please, please subscribe. Even hit that like button. And uh, even better yet, maybe even tell some of your classmates. Please, it'd mean the world to me. Take care.